All right, everybody, I am here with a brand new company. It's not actually brand new. They've been around for a little while, but you've probably never heard of them. The reason why I'm super excited to bring them onto the channel as a, a partner, but also to sit down with the CEO, Eric Kraft, and tell you about this is I have not seen a company that has so much value asset wise that's trading for so little. And this company has uh, been through um, almost a corporate takeover, uh, fairly recent, and some massive, massive names have come on board and are trying to steer this ship in the right direction. So let me just quickly uh, tell you why I think this is super interesting. They're trading at 19 cents currently. And let me tell you why this does not make any sense. So Leading Edge Materials, it has a few different projects, Graphite Project, Rare Earths Project, and a Nickel Cobalt Project, all located in Europe. And we're going to talk about those projects in a little bit more detail. But you can tell that these guys have been working on these different projects and they actually have something to show for. They have net present values um, of 250. This is US dollars for the their Graphite mine. They also have uh, for the Rare Earths project, which is a massive, massive project, by the way, it's very large, 762 million US. And these PEAs, yes, they are preliminary in nature, but they're 2021 PEAs. These are not old, you know, 2017 PEAs that don't make any more sense. And then we're also going to talk about the project in Romania that they're earning into, which used to be a uranium mine, um, funny enough. Now, this is where Leading Edge is not comparable to any other company because you see who's on the board, um, who's leading the company. First of all, board of management ownership is 39%, which is massive. But it's even better when you look at who's behind it. President and CEO of Av Ivanhoe Mines, large Eric Johansson. I, I mean, this guy, he's seen the whole process of discovery to development um, into production of Ivanhoe Mines, which is the richest, largest copper project um, that you could find. It's located in the Congo. Daniel Major, somebody that you recognize from um, our dear Govix Uranium. Um, you also have Eric Kraft, who's the CEO, who's the largest shareholder of this company. And then you, um, you also have Magnus, who uh, is a past London mining guy. So you really have the who's who of mining um, coming together and pushing this company forward. And when I tell you that the, the numbers don't make any sense, I'm going to tell you right now what I mean by that. When you look at the market cap of the company, it is a mere 31 million Canadian dollars, not even US dollars, okay? This does not make any sense. It's not going to stay like this for long. Um, and these guys are starting to get out there and promote their company, rightly so. So super excited. Let's hear from the CEO himself, Eric Kraft. I am here today with Eric Kraft with Leading Edge Materials. He's going to tell us all about it and why this company is super exciting. Eric, welcome to the show. Tell us about your company, please. Hello, Fabi. Thanks uh, for having me. Uh, our company is called Leading Edge Materials. We are a Canadian public company listed on the Toronto Venture Exchange. We are also listed in, uh, on NASDAQ in uh, First North in Stockholm and on the OTC in the US. Uh, we have um, three projects in the European Union. Our focus is critical raw materials for energy storage, electromobility, green transition, uh, electrification, and all within Europe. We have a, a nickel cobalt exploration project in Romania, which uh, is uh, extremely promising. Uh, we uh, won that license last year, was tied up for, for some years, and, and uh, after we, we started uh, the exploration program there, we have, have uh, amazing results, incredibly excited about that. Uh, we also have a, a built and permitted graphite mine and plant in central Sweden, where I come from. The graphite mine is one of the few uh, built and permitted in the Western world. We have, um, it's been on care and maintenance uh, since some years while we've been developing a, a downstream uh, anode business. 
Uh, in Sweden, we also have a, a globally significant rare earth deposit that's been under development for the last uh, 10, 15 years. It is uh, interesting because of its size and because of its uh, very rich endowment in dysprosium and terbium, which are the heavy rare earth elements that are not so common and uh, that you will know are absolutely critical to make permanent magnets. Along with me, I have our, the chairman of our company is uh, Swedish, uh, Lars-Erik Johansson. He is well known for having built Ivanhoe Mines. Uh, he was recruited by Robert Friedland in 2006, I think, and, and built Ivanhoe Mines from one drill hole in the Congo to uh, the very large company it is today. Uh, Lars-Erik retired from Ivanhoe Mines about three years ago and, and came to uh, join me to help us develop this. Uh, I think uh, he's uh, very excited about uh, doing something in Europe and that has ties to his uh, home country uh, like me. On the board there's also Daniel Major who you know very well Fabi. He's the CEO of Govix Uranium, a company where uh, I'm very involved as well. And, um, and then there's me, who is uh, uh, Swedish, and I've been involved in natural resources uh, for, for a long time. Very good. Um, you mentioned a few projects there in Europe. When somebody mentions Europe, I immediately think, okay, this is, this is going to be somewhat problematic, right? Because at least for me personally, there's this uh, thinking um, in Europe of nobody wants a mine close to, to them. And there are many different hurdles that you have to jump through, et cetera. Uh, what is it like working in Europe so far for you guys? Uh, totally. You, you are right, Fabi. Uh, Europe has uh, for a long time been rather spoilt and, and having chosen to have uh, other territories do their mining for them and just buying materials. Um, and uh, that, however, uh, is, is changing. First of all, with COVID. When you had supply chains, uh, chains uh, were disrupted, and, and we saw that, you know, just in time delivery that was such a well oiled machine didn't work that good in, in practice. And now, of course, with Russia's invasion of, of Ukraine and, and uh, a shooting war in the middle of Europe, uh, and we see Germany, for example, being completely dependent on Russian gas, and how, how uh, when those supplies are disrupted, the follow-on on effects on on so many things. So, uh, you know, with uh, with with all of this, uh, the sentiment has really changed a lot, and and of course we are, we welcome that. And and Europe has a you know uh, history of mining for thousands of years, and it, it's really you know in the last uh, 30, 40 years that we've been a bit spoiled, but I I, re, I see that. Uh, that uh, from political level and, and uh, people in general, there is uh, big reasons to be optimistic about this change in sentiment. Interesting. And the other thing I'm thinking about is, okay, you guys have a permitted uh, mine up in, gra in Sweden, a graphite mine, right? And then there's the Rare Earth Project also in Sweden. And then there's Nickel Cobalt in Romania. It sounds like a lot of different things, a lot of different moving pieces. Uh, and so I, I guess my question regarding that is, are you guys going to further develop all of them? Are you planning on spinning something off? What's the, the goal here? Yeah, it's a good question. Of course, uh, uh, we are not a big company and we have three uh, very significant projects. And uh, yeah, I, in the board of directors, uh, obviously, we're very focused on, on shareholder value. And, and uh, me as a large shareholder, I, uh, needless to say, feel the same. But, uh, for the time being, we've decided to uh, uh, develop these projects on our own. And, and then, uh, you know, we will see where, where things go. We are, we are um, uh, flexible as uh, whatever policy we think will will create the most shareholder value for uh, our shareholders. And which one of them is, I guess, the one that you guys are working on the most? The the, the most where we're most active right now is uh, in Romania in the exploration project. 
Yeah, so we had a prospecting license there since back in 2017. Uh, then that uh, project get held up in court. We were not a party to those court proceedings, but it was slowed down uh, for several years. And it's really last year that I managed to untangle uh, all of that situation and we won the ex exclusive exploration license. And after we won that, it, we have uh, progressed it really quickly. On, on, in the license area, there is an old uranium mine. It was uh, uh, depleted and mined out and shut th about 30 years ago. Uh, but because of that, there has been an enormous amount of exploration done on the property since the 1950s, the Soviets started, and then the Romanians. And they've really only been looking for uranium. They encountered all sorts of other mineralization, but uh, attributed no value to that. They were only interested in, Roman in uranium. So it's really a, a kind of, I would call it brownfield exploration project because we have access to people who were around uh, in those days and documentation. And most importantly, there are underground galleries, tunnels that have been dug and we have hundreds of kilometers of, of uh, uh, these underground uh, uh, galleries. These we opened and we entered in, in January this year and, and uh, uh, we have uh, 11 uh, preliminary targets. We've uh, only started working on two of them and it's uh, incredible what we found. So in, in, in one of these we have encountered well over 100 meters of uh, mineralization. This gallery basically goes straight through an ore body. You have visible on the gallery walls all directions uh, nickel and cobalt uh, uh, oxidized. It's all purple and green, and, and uh, we have published some of these pictures, and, and there will be, uh, I hope, plenty more coming. So we are doing that. We are doing a, a, a sampling program in geophysics, and, and really all of this is, is in order to uh, so that we can do a, a drill program that we will do in the second half of this year. To, to we, we know that there appears to be very handsome grades down there and, and to determine volumes. We are designing a, a drill program that we are yeah, incredibly excited to do. I think um, as far as exploration projects go, uh, this is the best uh, I've seen or heard about at the moment um, and certainly in, in Europe. Yeah, I was looking at some of the pictures that you guys posted on Twitter, and it, it looked like the the galleries that you you guys have been able to to get to are are in really good condition, which is uh, surprising. The other thing that I wanted to ask you about, Eric, is so if this has been sort of drilled through from I think you mentioned the fifties for a very long time uh, with the Soviets. What kind of historical information do you guys have access to that would help you further, you know, design this drilling campaign? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we have access to uh, to people and some documents, but but it's really uh, we we need to go in there now with modern methods and modern thinking and and uh, see what to do and and yeah. F f first step is just to design the drill program. We will drill from inside these galleries. So, which is much easier than than uh, outdoor, and uh, then we will, you know, try to determine the, the the volumes of what we've discovered. Okay, so with with all three projects, um, I am thinking not just the fact that you know uh, there are different areas of focuses, but also um, with everything being in Europe, everything costs a lot of money. How are you guys going to be able to finance the advancement of um, these different projects? Uh, we we try to be very efficient with the use of consultants and everything, and and uh, the uh, people involved from our side are very experienced in in uh, in uh, uh, advancing big projects, making sure that we are on time and on budget. Uh, the of course it costs money. The our opinion is that we are very undervalued compared to our peers. We have a significant amount of warrants that are held by insiders after the company was rescued in 2020 by us. And 
so I, I, our view and insiders are supportive to continue to fund the company through exercising those warrants un, until we, we, we feel that the company is valued uh, a bit more in line with its peers. So for, for perspective, I, I told you about um, the, this amazing exploration project that we're in the middle of. The, the two assets that we have in Sweden, uh, one is, is a, uh, a, the built graphite mine that I mentioned. We have a PA out on that, uh, that we uh, published one and a half years ago, uh, that describes a bit the restart of the graphite mine uh, and, and uh, downstream anode material scenario that returns an NPV uh, post tax of, of uh, about $250 million. The rare earth deposit in Sweden, which when we took over the company, we, we redesigned that project with a way uh, to give it the maximum chances to, to get, get permitted. Uh, that returns an MPV of about 750 million. So in our opinion, we have this incredibly exciting exploration project that is, is moving very quickly. And then we have two very advanced projects with an MPV of a billion dollars. Yeah, so you, you will see why insiders uh, are, are uh, we, um, we would like to avoid to be diluted at this level. Exactly. Yeah, the, there's a massive discrepancy between you know what you have in the ground, what you already own, um, not even considering what you will likely find in this exploration program. We know there's something there. We just don't know how much and, you know, the sort of grades that you have there. Um, versus what your actual market cap is right now. This is why I am so excited about this, because if, if I can't assign a value to a company, um, then it becomes very difficult, right? If it's just the exploration upside, um, but you guys have a lot of exploration upside and you already own assets that are worth something in the real world. So I'm super excited uh, to hear more about that. Um, so what can people expect going forward? And, and what is the, the expected timeline, Eric? Um, are, you, you mentioned that the, the drill program will start um, in the second half of this year. What's going to be done from now until then? Uh, the, uh, last week, we started uh, uh, digging trenches in Romania. Those will be um, uh, sampled. We, we will uh, uh, be doing channel sampling inside these uh, hot zones that we have discovered. So there is uh, uh, quite a lot of news flow that is coming wh uh, while we are designing uh, the, the drill program in Romania. The rare earth deposit in Sweden, we've announced we are doing a Natura 2000 permit application uh, on that. In the second half of the year, we will also be starting a PFS uh, big project on, on the uh, let's say re redesign that we did of, of that project uh, project in in the PEA. Yeah, uh, so um, yeah, there is uh, the, the, uh, there is a lot lot to be done, and and really, I, I'm happy to talk to you because uh, we have been so focused on on developing these projects and doing all that work. We haven't really marketed the company or or the stock, so. That is something we would like to change. We we feel that we have a lot to share. Uh, that uh, that is is really extraordinary. Yeah, I'm sure the market will love uh, such value with such experienced people here, and especially as you move forward and um, dig up what's going on there in Romania. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, where can people find out more about Leading Edge? You can uh, uh, look on our website. Maybe you will post a link uh, in your interview and, and um, follow us on Twitter. And, and uh, uh, anyone can contact me anytime. All right. Thank you very much. I hope to speak to you soon with news about um, all of your different projects. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.